I wanted to bring you guys the most informative and useful agents SDK video to bring you the most value in the shortest period of time. This is it. So go ahead and give me that sub and let's get started. So we'll break this video down into three main sections. So we'll start with the absolute essentials. These are things that you absolutely need to know to even get started with working with the agents SDK. Then we'll take a look at a few of the more advanced concepts. Now these are super important and we'll look at them using an example so that you can actually learn how to practically piece together these agents to create agentic systems. And then finally, I'll show you a few of my own special things really really cool tips that you need to know to build effective agents sort of cheat codes that i've learned as i've built all the agents that i've worked on so let's kick things off now to maximize the speed at which you can build your own agentic systems i've gone ahead and created this repository it has a bunch of code snippets that you'll find super helpful while creating your own agents and uh, a documentation as well that you can use to allow cursor to build for your agentic systems just by you prompting it which is super helpful and of course you'll need it to follow along with this tutorial so go ahead and grab that link in the description download the repository and i'm pretty sure you'll find it super helpful going forward so to kick things off we need an understanding of how to create agents just make sure you've installed the open ai agents package and you've also set up your api key and we'll kick things off with this agent creation file over here so first of all to create an agent an agent in the sdk is really similar to an llm all it needs is instructions you can also pass in additional information here like what kind of agent you want to create what model you want it to run off of um, but you also need a name which isn't something common with llms and we'll see why this is useful later on with tracing but to actually run the agent and have it actually generate an output you need to create what what is being called a runner in the SDK. So the runner accepts what agent you want it to start with, so the agent that's going to start the process, as well as a list of messages. This can be sort of user or assistant messages, but you can't put a system message here because it goes under the instructions. Once you're done creating your runner, you can actually generate the final output of that run by getting the dot final output component of it. So now in our terminal, if we go ahead and give this a run, you can see we're able to generate a very simple response from the agent, just telling us that the capital of France is Paris. Now the specific method that we've used to generate a run here is this run sync method and this is useful for actually blocking the execution of the program until your generation is complete but you'll see later on in the video that we make use of a slightly different method which is this run method now this is actually an asynchronous method which means that you can leave it running in the background and then do something with this response later on when it's actually done so that the rest of your program can keep running as the agent generates this response so that's looking good but a super essential piece of functionality usually with agents is generating structured outputs instead of just text and that's actually really easy Easy to set up here as well. You can see here we're creating a basic agent as usual if you ignore this part and we're running it as well to generate a response which is cool. Now we can define a structured output to be returned using a basic pydantic class. You can put in here whatever you want. I've also noticed that you can actually nest these classes inside of each other which is kind of cool because then you can have different agents work on different things and then eventually bring back their response into a specific format which we will do later on. And then to ask the agent to generate that type once you're done creating it you need to specify that as the output type. Now if you ask it to generate its final output you'll get something that looks like this now notice how this is the actual contents of the class that you're asking it to generate which means say for instance you wanted specifically the population you could actually just come in here and just directly specify that you just wanted the specific population of the response that it generates which is actually really really cool it's not that common with these agentic systems usually you will get a dictionary instead of an actual class object that represents what you want back now we can extend that functionality to talk about tools so here i have a basic time agent you can see it's output a structured output of time info which is basically just a class that has two integers which is the hours and minutes in it and i'm asking the agent to tell me the time but on my actual system and clearly agents can't do that because when i run the command i get that it's 15 27. now surprisingly it is actually 15 on my system i know this was just a guess from the agent but i'm shocked it got the hour right but it's actually 15 55 not 27. so we need some kind of way for this agent to be able to retrieve the actual time on the user's system and this is where a function becomes really important now in the new function definition system it's actually quite easy to create functions for these agents all you need to do is create a function so it could be either async or not and then label it using this function tool identify over here internally this converts this definition of the function into a schema and an actual tool call and then it actually executes it so that the agent can use it now you can see here all i'm doing is getting the time right now and then returning the hours and minutes and in here you can actually give the agent a list of tools and just directly pass in the name of your tool with that in place actually Actually running the tool a second time you can see it returns that it's 1556 which is the actual time on my computer now it's a bit helpful to know exactly how these function schemas are generated and sent to these models so over here I have a very simple function that basically adds two values and I've given it the function tool label at the top now the schema definition that's actually sent to the agent is generated using these comments that you have at the top over here you can define what the function does as well as define what every single argument and what the function returns as well and the agent will get something that looks 
looks sort of like this. It gets a description of the function, uh, the parameters that are available in the function as properties, as well as their descriptions and their names and what is required. So depending on whether you stated that this is optional or not, and it knows exactly what object that function is going to return because you give it a return type over here. So you can take a look at what different function schemas are going to look like using this function example Python file. And this will give you a pretty decent understanding of how these functions are actually ingested by the model, which is actually quite important to know because it can help you specify how your model interacts with different functions. I do want to mention as well that if you look at my instructions for the time agent, I'm still mentioning the get system time tool within the system instruction. We're used with these new models being able to automatically know what functions they need to call just off of the function schemas. But I've noticed with the time that I've been working on this agent SDK that agents don't actually always know what functions are available to them, especially if they're dealing with even slightly complicated scenarios. Sometimes you need to help them and guide them within the system instructions on exactly what functions are available and when to call them. Now we have a pretty good understanding of the basics of the system. We can actually begin to build our own agentic system and get familiar with everything else. First, I want to show you exactly what agent we're going to be looking at and uh, what task it performs. And this is a, an email automation agent. So what this agent does is to fully automate the long hours of looking through all the spam in your email to find emails that actually have relevant information. And the way this UI works is you can select this automate email UI over here. You have a bunch of settings and these are all demo settings for now. And what you can do is under this process, you can select what emails you want to automate and select which ones you want to work on over here. Or better yet, you can use the process all section and what actions you want to take as well, what actions. And then you can ask the agent to process the emails. Now what's happening in the background is that the agent is actually receiving all the emails. And this is a system that uses two agents together. So you have the manager agent that is in charge of reading the emails, deciding which ones can be automatically handled by the system according to the settings that you set in this tab over here. And then you have the automation agent that receives only the agents that need to be automated. And it does things like either replying to the emails or unsubscribing to an email list, depending on what it thinks should be done and what settings you have. So at the end of the process, you have a list of automatic actions that should be performed on a select few emails. And then you have a review document that you need to read that will outline what important emails were in your information and can't actually be automated by the system. Maybe they contain super important information or they just require you to actually take action on your part. So you can see over here that the agent started by adding a few emails that need to be reviewed and then some emails that need to be automated. So four automated emails were selected and two emails were selected for review and it's written the review report. Now the automatic agent is in the background automating the actions that need to be automated. But then here I can see that some emails needed to be reviewed. So high priority email. So it looks like there was a device login into my PayPal. So I'll need to look into that, which is cool. I can select this link over here to actually take me to the email. And then over here we have some medium priorities. So there's a quarterly strategy here that I need to review. All right, I'll take a look at that later on. And while we were reading the review, you can see the actions from the agent actually came in. So, and at the bottom, we can actually take a look at the actions that were taken. So you can see it unsubscribed from the LinkedIn newsletter, which is definitely a good choice. And you can go ahead and select apply to actually apply all the actions. So that's the agent we're going to be learning how to build. It's a pretty detailed agent, should give you a very good understanding of how to use the SDK. So let's go ahead and uh, move on. Now, as you can probably tell, I've gained the high quality insights that I'm sharing with you in this video from working on some really special AI projects. At AIA, I've helped individuals and companies alike build some of the most special AI projects out there by providing the extensive experience and expertise needed in AI development to bring these projects to life. Now, if you've been looking for an AI professional to help you bring your project to life, go ahead and check out my portfolio in the description and book a meeting so that we can see how to take your AI project to the next level. There's never been a better time to build an AI tool to either use internally or sell to your consumers than now. So if there's something that you'd find super useful either for your project or a tool that you want to build, go ahead and check out that link in the description and see if, if the services that we can provide to you at AIA are something that you'd find super helpful. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue with the video. The very first thing that we need to put together is the manager agent. And again, this manager agent is in charge of basically reading through all the emails, deciding which ones need human review and which ones can be automated, and then writing the human review and letting the automation agent take care of the rest. Now you can see here we're giving it a list of tools that would be useful to do this. So it has a tool to save emails for human review, save emails for automation, get a bunch of statistics about which emails have been processed and when they've been finished. So this is specifically to know if the automation agent has done its full job and then the ability to write a human review, which is what we read when we're, when we're looking at the emails that need review. Now we've written its instructions over here. We're basically telling it exactly what to do. And then down here comes the main part where we're actually creating the agent. So we've created a class over here that will house all the agents. Now these are the instructions that will feed on to the manager agent later on. And the very first thing you will notice over here is this recommended prompt prefix that I'm actually importing from agents.extensions.handoffprompt. So this is a super helpful 
powerful prompt that you should add as a prefix to all your prompts and in essence all it really does is basically just tell the agents that they are part of an agentic system and uh, everything that they need to do it's also super helpful with letting them know how to actually hand off tasks to other agents and OpenAI in their documentation over here talks about how you can import it and actually make use of it other than that the rest of the prompt is simply just instructions on the manager about what steps to take while actually doing its task and then down here we create a class that we call the manager agent and this class is actually going to host both of our agents but then you can see that the very first thing that we're doing over here is actually creating the automation agent whose full source code is available in the file if you want to take a look at it and then down here what we're creating is the actual manager agent so we're giving it the name its instructions as well as the tools and then we're dealing with handoffs over here which we want to take a look at really carefully so handoffs work by enabling you to connect multiple agents letting each agent know to which other agent it can pass the process to so if you have two different agents they usually have different tasks within the agentic system and you can let one agent know that it can pass to the other agent by adding the other agent that it can pass to as an agent in the handoffs list over here now it's kind of important to keep in mind that internally within the sdk these handoffs are actually just tool calls so it's handoff underscore and then it passes in the exact agent that you want it to pass to and so sometimes you need to give the agent specific instructions about how to pass on to a specific agent and you can always let them know how to do that by just referencing the name of the function that they're probably going to call by passing on to that agent now in this case we have a bit of a cyclic situation over here where for instance the automation agent that was created will receive a handoff from the manager agent but then it needs to pass it back so you can see that to enable that what i've done is i passed in the handoff of the automation agent within the creation of the manager agent and then down here i'm using automation agent dot handoffs to let it know that it can actually pass back to us in which case we are the automation agent in this specific case now the actual orchestration of the process happens in this process email function which this function is essentially just the function that receives emails from an external source that need to be processed and you can see over here it receives them as sort of a list of emails and then down here you can see that we actually create a new runner which is what we're familiar to and then we pass in the agent that's going to begin that run and give it a prompt over here that allows it to actually receive the emails now you can see that we're passing in two new things here and the very first one is the run configuration which we create right here now the run configuration is super important for tracing and what tracing allows you to do is to just keep track of how your agents are running if you head over to platform.openai.com slash traces you'll find a bunch of traces in here for the previous tests that we've been running if you've been running these in here so we have one for agent workflow the time agent that we tested just earlier but you'll see that most of your traces are just given this generic name of agent workflow within the tracing tab over here and this is because we didn't actually define a run config when we're actually creating those so you can see over here we're actually creating a new config we're creating a run config giving it a workload name and then setting tracing to false and when we actually run that we pass it in here as the run config this means that the traces that get generated from any run that's given that configuration will have the workflow name of email management flow which will be super helpful for identifying these traces going forward and after that all we do is give the agentic system a chance to run and we return its results from the function now back at the definition of this function over here it's actually quite helpful to take a look at where the function is actually called and this is within our process email function that's called in the main file now what you will notice over here is that we are creating a new email context and contexts are super useful in these agentic systems so we need to take a look at them specifically to begin with now contexts are used for keeping track of information within an agentic system so if you want to store your own information for your agentic system that doesn't necessarily need to be available to these agents you would sort of do it using a context and then if you need this information you can actually use it for tool calls you can also save it using tools but if you want to feed it to your agents then you can actually do it just by appending it to the messages so it's a sort of non-agentic memory that we're using so that we don't need to put everything within our system messages now to define a context all you need to do is create a new class and you can initialize it if you want but in essence any pydantic class can sort of be used as a context and you can see over here in our email context we're setting up some variables that we'll use later on we're also giving it some functions over here that can actually be called by the agents now once you've defined a context all you need to do is actually create an instance of it which you can see we're doing here in the process emails function and then you can actually pass it directly to the run over here so that that context will be used by all agents within that run now tools that are created within the sdk can actually directly interact within that run so earlier we looked at this save emails to human review function it's used by the agent to save specific emails for human review in its definition it takes in a context and has this run context wrapper and in here you can pass in any pydantic class so you could pass in the best model it's a pydantic class or pretty much anything else but if you want to make use of specific functions that are directly within that context then you want to actually pass in that context over here so that it can be used at the bottom you can see all it does basically is it calls context.context .context and then it tells it to save a specific email for human review now directly within the context we're actually reading the email ids that get passed over here and then doing the actual modification 
application to the context. So we're setting self.human review IDs over here to actually be the emails that passed in. We're also changing the count over here. And then we have a public set over here, which is actually what's being used to update our front end over here. And with that out of the way, our entire agentic system is pretty much built. So this main file over here defines two main endpoints. One of them is the process emails, which receives a list of emails that need to be processed. And it creates a job ID, a system email, a context as well, and simply saves those jobs so that they can be returned later on. So you can see over here, we are using an asynchronous function over here to begin our processing system because we don't actually want to block our endpoint to other people as we finish processing these emails. So that continues to run in the background. And this job status function over here receives a job ID, which is a definition of an email job that's taking place. And it uses that job ID to return the context of that job ID. So by returning the context from the backend, that's exactly how we're able to keep a report coming in here, letting the user know exactly what emails are being processed and what functions are being called in the background. Once the process is done, like you saw, the user can then receive a list of actions that need to be taken and he himself can actually choose to execute or not execute those tasks using the front end. And well, that my friends is pretty much it. That's exactly how easy it is to extract a multi-agent process using the agents SDK. Now you've probably learned quite a bit from this video and if you have, be sure to go ahead and give it a sub and give me a like as well. Agent creation is a pretty complicated process and if you want to join a community of people that are actively testing out these agent technologies, ask whatever question you have or get in touch with me specifically, go ahead and check out our Discord channel. It's one of the links in the description. Go ahead and jump in and I'll be super glad to see you in there. Thanks a bunch for watching and hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.